you. One thing that I've been working on since I've been with you guys last was um, we're trying to take a holistic uh, view on all of our cooking. Um, we're trying to put all the good things that are here on the farm that we raise to work for us. We've been doing a lot of a lot of uh, experiment cooking with our our home raised proteins, uh, chickens, pork. Um, I've put a few pictures out on our Facebook page of some of the meals that we've been cooking. Um, I put a little post out about some dinosaur bones and I'll show you a picture of that now. And those were really good. Um, of course, they weren't dinosaur bones. They were short ribs from a beef that we raised here. Another thing that I started working on here lately is, you know, I don't know about you, but we go to the grocery store and the with the way that inflation is now, the price of goods to get them to the stores, not to mention that stores... A lot of stores have empty shelves. It's hard to get a hold of anything. So we've been doing a lot of experimenting with making our own bread because bread, you know, we don't have to look back very far. Bread was under a dollar a loaf. Well, now it's closer to $2 a loaf. So not to mention, it may not even be on the shelf. So we're trying to become more self-sustaining so that we could take care of things like that. So. I started a sourdough starter. I don't know what your feelings are on sourdough. Some people don't like sourdough. But the main reason for sourdough is so that you don't have to buy yeast. Now, the reason why I started a sourdough starter, and I got to show you this. It's full of bubbly goodness down in that jar so all it is to make this was i used a half a cup of all-purpose flour and a half cup a half to a third cup because you have you have to play with this a little bit of water now very important which I made the mistake when I very first started this. Man, this smells good. When I very first started was, I didn't know that the chlorine is bad. So if you're on tap water like we are, no, we don't have a well. Remember back in one of my first videos when we brought the dozer in here, guess what we filled up? Our well. We just didn't know enough about it. We didn't test the water. I didn't think we wanted a well at that time. And you know that little farm boss that runs around here? It made us nervous with having that open well around. So we went ahead and had them fill it. But I tell you all that because our tap water, of course, that comes to us, all tap water, if you're on city or rural water, has chlorine in it of some type. Now, why does it have chlorine? to make it healthy for you and I, so that it doesn't grow all the green, fun, nasty stuff, right? <clears throat> so, if you have tap water, don't think that you can't do this. What you do, you fill up your tap water, you fill a glass up, and I just happen to use our measuring cup. That way I know how much I'm gonna have, you know, to use. Um, and I go ahead and fill it up, and you just set it on the counter and you leave it there overnight. Overnight, the chlorine in that water will dissipate into the air and you will return back to normal water, non-chlorinated. It's just like leaving water in your pool or in your stock tanks for your animals. I don't know about you guys, but we spent a lot of time showing with when the kids were little. And we would take our animals to a different town to show, and they would not drink the water. Well, it's because that chlorine level is different 
in each town, right? Some, some have to have a high chlorine level because they have a high organism level in their water. You know, it may be surface water. It may be that their lines are old. So they have to have a high chlorine level to make sure to burn all that bad stuff out. Now, I don't care, you know, if you have an ill opinion of chlorine, that's fine. I'm not saying that it's good for you either, but I'm just saying if you don't have it, you're a guarantee you're not going to drink the water because it's going to be nasty. Anyway, back to our sourdough starter. So you put that non-chlorinated water and get you some type of a vessel. So I'm using an older mason jar here. Um, one that we just had empty around. Lid's not in that, that important. It's nice if you have a lid. Um, just don't screw it on tight. This is going to create a lot of pressure. Okay. And you want that air to be able to come in there. That's part of what you're getting, uh, what you want within your sourdough starter. So, Dale, what's the big deal about sourdough starter? So I put that water and flour. That's my only two ingredients. So like I said, half a cup of flour, between a third and a half a cup of water. I put them in and then I mix it. Now, if you've cooked pancakes, pretty much anyone who spends much time in the kitchen has cooked some type of a pancake or knows what pancake batter should be like. That's the consistency we're wanting. We're wanting that kind of liquid, but yet just thick enough that say you stick the spoon in, you bring it back out, it's on there, okay? So we want that mixture. Now, once we do that, then I highly recommend what I did was I took my jar and I just got a paper towel. So we have the ones that are in thin strips. I fold it in half. I take my rubber band. I put the paper towel over it and then the rubber band around. Now it can breathe in and out through this, right? I can get air into here. It's also going to keep all the bugs and creepy craw crawlies out of there. Not that we have any of those in our house, but we are a farm. I mean, open the door, fly may come in. It doesn't matter where you're at in this world. You always have some kind of little creepy crawly that wants to come in and they're going to like this. Okay. The other thing about this is we take it and we set it in a warm spot on our kitchen. So I'll set it on top of our cook stove and keep it off of the cool countertops um, because we need it to be warm. We need it to be roughly 70 degrees or warmer. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't want to leave it up there when you're cooking dinner tonight because it's going to get super hot and you'll kill it. What we're going for is we're actually capturing the bacteria that's on that wheat. Yes, it's good for you. It's not bad bacteria. And in the air, and we're promoting growth out of that. As that grows, it's going to put off gases. Those gases are going to react within our flour mixture and it's going to cause it to grow and rise and cause bubbles in it. So why are we doing all this? Because this has now become our yeast. It's our yeast starter for our bread. So I'm going to use part of this to start making some bread around here. And I'm going to bring you along with this. Now, what do I do with it once I start it? So for the first 24 hours, we're going to mix that. We're going to set it on the counter on our cook stove when we're not using it somewhere in a warm place. And we're going to leave it set for 24 hours. I recommend whatever time of the day that you are at home and spending time in the kitchen is when you check on this. That's when you want to start it. 
So typically we are at home in the evenings, you know, at the end of the day we wind down. So that's when I started this. So at the same time every day, I'm gonna feed this starter. Wait, did he just say feed it? Feed it? Like we're gonna feed him. Yeah, you heard me right. I said we're gonna feed it. No, we're not gonna feed it like we're gonna feed the chickens. But we have to give this, all those little organisms, something to eat, okay? Because the more we feed it and the longer this goes, the stronger they're gonna be. The more of those gases they're gonna create and the stronger our yeast culture is gonna be. Now, why do we want a strong yeast culture? Because that's what makes bread rise, okay? You know, that yummy goodness of those bubbles and, and those holes within that bread or the height that we get out of that bread is not because we just keep stacking it on top of each other. It's because the gases that are created in there when we cook it or when it rises causes that texture. Not to mention, the older this gets and the more we feed it, the more of that yummy goodness that helps break down all those starches within that wheat or within that bread is gonna help us digest it better. So many problems that we have today because of our health is caused from all this highly processed and then all the additives we put into it so that it makes it more and more and more shelf stable. So is this gonna be an extremely shelf stable bread when I get done with it? Probably not, but here's the deal. I don't wanna make bread that sits on the counter for a month. We're supposed to be eating it so we can make a smaller loaf because we'll make it more often. It'll be fresher. It's better for our insides. Not to mention it's sustainable. I don't worry about the fact that, oh no, the grocery store's out of bread again. Okay, it's been 24 hours since you started your starter. Now what do we do? Well, in that 24 hours, your starter should have doubled in size. And now that it's doubled, we're gonna run out of room in that jar. So what we need to do is we discard part of that and get it back to our ratio of a half a cup of the starter, a half a cup of flour, and a half a cup of water. And repeat that again and again so that we have a healthy starter. If you wanna make bread, you just make your ratio bigger so that you have the proper amount of starter. We'll come back again when we're ready to make bread. See you later.